Hi, I'm Maggie. Welcome to Experiments in Crafting. Uh, tonight I have a whole bunch of shopping. Oh, hold on, sorry. Um, I have a whole bunch of shopping that I've done. Um, a bunch from Hobby Lobby, a bunch from Red Heart, and then I did, I went to YarnCon a couple of weeks ago. Hopefully you saw my short video and my Instagram and Facebook posts on, uh, all of the stuff that I saw there. Um, I bought a bunch of the stuff that I had posted pictures of, and I just wanted to show some of that off to you. Um, and then about a month, about two months ago, I streamed a unboxing of the Lytherco subscription uh, boxes, and I've gotten two more of those since, and I wanna show those off. And I think I've got a little bit of yarn from a local, uh, it's called, uh, knitting pipeline. It's a it's a podcast, I believe, and they hold host a local retreat around here. And as part of that, there's a little vendor fair with about a dozen or so vendors. Um, and so I've got a little bit of yarn that I picked up from that. So I will jump in and get started. If you want to see anything in more detail, please just let me know. I can hold it up to the camera. We can switch angles and show everything in a little bit more detail. Uh, if you have any questions about anything, please feel free to ask those in the chat. Um, and if you have questions later on, you can leave those in the comments section, or you can find me on Facebook or on Instagram at Experiments and Crafting. Um, so if, I guess I'm just going to go ahead and get started. Oh, I guess there's some comments that I should be looking at. Oh, just a hello. Um, hello. Um, normally I have my comments up in front of me, but that's not working. YouTube did some updates, so I'm going to be looking at my phone for comments. Um, but all right, I guess I'm going to get started and I'm just going to dig into the stuff from YarnCon. So on top here, I have Mirror Ball from Good For You. Good For You is, um, so I guess I should back up and explain YarnCon a little bit. YarnCon is an indie fiber festival meaning that everybody there is selling uh, typically hand-dyed or handmade products. Um, it could be hand-spun, could be yarn-related things like hooks and notions like that. Um, but everything is done by independent, which is what Indie stands for, um, crafters and makers. So um, everything there is more or less one of a kind, but you can usually find most of these dyers online um, or at other small fiber festivals. So this one is done every year, usually around the first or second weekend of April in Chicago. So I've been going for three years now and it's always a lot of fun to go. Um, the other festival that I usually go to is in Schaumburg and that's usually in August. That one is not an indie fair specifically. It has a bunch of the big brands. It's called Stitches. Um, so there are tons of shows all over the place. If you want to know um, any more about any of those, um, I can post a link. There's uh, a website called Knitter's Review that I think that has a calendar of all the fiber festivals that they've compiled from all over the world. Um, most of them tend to be in the US, but there are ones, um, a lot happen in Ireland and the UK um, and a number of them in like New Zealand and stuff, places where uh, yarn is big. So, um, so back to the yarn itself. Um, this is Mirror Ball by Good For You. Good For You is, only available in local yarn stores and at festivals. Um, as far as I know, she does not sell online. Um, she doesn't have a website. She doesn't have a uh, like an Etsy store. Um, this is a colorway called When in Doubt Add Fuchsia. Um, Mirrorball is a lace weight with uh, Stellina in it. And Stellina is a sparkly fiber that is is uh, spun into the yarn. It's not wrapped around. So a lot of times when you get sparkly yarn, 
um, like some of the ones I'm going to show you from Hobby Lobby and uh, Red Heart, the, the fiber is wrapped around the yarn. Um, so it's wrapped around rather than mixed in. So Stellina is mixed in, and you probably can't really see the sparkle tonight, but this is a really pretty bright purple with some sparkle, and obviously I'm a big fan of purple. It goes really well with my hair. Um, so I've got this one. Um, I also picked up these two. This is Clotta by Good For You. It's the same, same yarn vendor. Um, I had a couple of these get messed up, and so I bought these as replacements. I'm trying to plan an afghan where I make squares out of each of the colors, and they'll have some common element. Um, but I have, you may notice, um, I'm not sure if they're visible in the wide angle, but um, I have this stick over here of rainbow yarns. Um, these are all the Clotta colors that I've acquired over several visits with Good For You. Um, and so I, uh, like I said, I think I've got an afghan in the works for that. Um, all right, so this was something that I bought that was not yarn. These are blocking pins, and you guys have probably seen some of my tutorials. I usually block with T-pins, um, which are just individual pins. This is basically so you can put four down at once and make a straight section. Um, this prevents you from having to do four pins really tightly. So I've never worked with... Uh, there's a there's a commercial product called knit blockers. Um, I think these are just called yarn blockers. Um, if you find them on Instagram or Facebook, the vendor who sold these, I did link to them um, on their Instagram page. So I'm, I'm pretty excited to try these out. I don't have anything right now that needs to be blocked, but there's always something in the works. So as soon as I have something ready to block, I will go ahead and use these and share how that goes with you. Um, I should mention these are incredibly sharp, like crazy sharp. Um, they're stabbed into some styrofoam here, but the one keeps falling out and pretty crazy sharp. Um, all right, what else do I have in here? Um, this is a sock weight yarn from Black Cat Fibers. Um, if you look at my Facebook and Instagram, there was a, a string of rainbow colored yarn that I was holding out that was also from Black Cat Fibers. Um, and so I did not pick up that long rainbow string, but I did pick this up. This is a really cool colorway. It's got a bunch of bright colors in it, some blue, some purple, some like aqua green, but then it also has brown and gray and sort of a blue black color in here. It ends up being a really cool color. It's called Chrysalina. Um, so if you're looking, uh, Black Cat I'm pretty sure is available on Etsy or they might have their own website, but I think you can get this online. Um, and if they, with most indie dyers, if you're interested in getting a specific colorway and you don't see it on their website, you can usually ask for it and they'll make it for you. Um, that is one of the benefits of working with an indie dyer is they'll usually make whatever you ask for. Um, some dyers are just really overloaded and they only do shop updates. And so you kind of just have to watch for it. But the majority of them do take custom orders and you can usually get a color if you're interested in something specific. Um, all right, so a couple people just asking um, about how you find out. And again, I will get that link for you. I'm, I don't have it on hand. I think it's Knitter's Review. Um, but if you Google like a list of yarn or list of fibers show or something like that. I think they come up as one of the top search results. Um, so I'm going to set this aside. 
Let's see what else we've got. I know that there are two yarns missing out of here. They're upstairs on the stairs in a little pink bag, and I forgot about them. Um, this here is just a mini skein or um, just, just a little teeny tiny amount of yarn. It's used for doing like an accent piece. Uh, I just thought that this blue was really striking. And this is by Northern Bee Studio. Uh, they have a lot of nice stuff. I've bought stuff from them in the past. This is a sock weight yarn. Um, I, for my personal use, I buy all sorts of yarn. But for my personal use, I tend to use sock weight to make shawls. Um, the majority of my yarn in my stash is all sock weight. Um, though I have tons and tons of every weight of yarn. Um, so yeah, this one is Northern Bee Studio. And it actually does not have a colorway on here. So I don't know what this color is called. But it's a really, really striking blue. Uh, the next thing in the bag here is a mini skein set. So it's a gradient set, um, or not really a gradient, but sort of a color coordinated set. They had a really beautiful shawl that was knit there, and I'm hoping that I can reproduce it uh, in crochet. I don't knit at all. Um, I've tried, but it's I'm just very very slow at it and I have so many projects that I want to work on that I just have not given it the time that it needs um, so this one is called koi it is a mosaic mini uh, sock weight again uh, mini skein total so there's um, looks like it's a hundred skeins or hundred grams total so a typical uh, skein of sock weight yarn comes as 100 grams. Um, this is 100 grams split across five different balls. So 20 grams a piece, total of 400 yards. Um, and again, this one is from Fiber Story. Uh, let's see. Sorry, I have to keep looking over at my phone. Um, oh, somebody mentioned that they like the book reviews. Uh, I'm glad to hear that. They're, they're not huge view videos. So I'm glad that somebody's watching them and is liking them. Um, they were kind of fun to do. I just checked out like all of the stitch dictionaries that the library had and basically the whole library system had. I can get books from the whole region um, ordered into the library. And so I just ordered everything they had and we did a whole bunch of those videos. Um, I've picked up some recent crochet books um, from Japan, and they're all charts. And so I've been considering doing some videos on how to read charts and how to work with uh, crochet patterns that are not in your language um, or your, you know, your first language um, that might be a little bit uh, just trying to figure out how you could take a pattern that's in Dutch or in Russian and still use it, even if there's no charts or you don't speak Dutch or Russian. So uh, I've been looking at, you know, seeing if I can explain how I would go about using that pattern. All right, so I do have one more yarn, um, but it's not in my pile here. I'll have to share it at a later time. Um, No, it's in a little pink bag from that company. Um, it's in the living room around the stairs. Sorry. Um, so this yarn here um, sort of saved my favorite for last. This is from Twisted Fiber Arts. Um, Twisted Fiber Arts makes beautiful, beautiful gradient yarns. Um, this one is from their Glamour line. Um, the colorway is called Bliss. It is, let's see, it's 140 grams, 500 yards. It's a sock weight yarn as well. Um, it also has Stellina. You might be able to see it sparkle. It's pretty sparkly. It's about the softest yarn I've ever handled. Um, so it, it really just, 
uh, something about it is so squishy and so soft. And if you have any chance of seeing Twisted Fiber Arts, you should absolutely go and see them and just squish their yarns for fun. Um, they're really, really beautiful yarns. They have all sorts of colors. They have a really nice booth where they have pretty much every colorway that they sell worked up into a shawl. And so they have a huge booth with shawls just all over, all knit and crochet. Um, so absolutely check them out if you are going to a fiber festival and they're there. Um, but yeah, their yarns do tend to be expensive. They're, they're hand dyed gradients. Gradients are always more expensive than just regular dyed yarn. Um, but if you are in the market for a luxury item, something to splurge on for your birthday or something like that, um, these are, are very nice. All right, so my husband did go get me the other yarns. They were upstairs, so I'm gonna pull these guys out. Um, this is from Fairy Tale Knits, as you can see from the bag. I love, a lot of the, the dyers have nice bags made up so that you kind of are carrying around advertisement for them, which is perfectly fine by me. Um, this one is called Mermaid, Mermaid's Hair Fingering. Um, it also has a little bit of Stellina in it. This is a colored Stellina. Um, so normally it's like a white sparkle. Um, like a white sparkly or a silver sparkly um, fiber in there. This one is blue and red and like aqua and it really goes well with the colors in this in this yarn. So this one, so it looks like it's mermaid's hair fingering but the name of the colorway is Hello Sweetie. Um, and again, this is Fairy Tale Knits. Um, I also got a mini skein of House Elf which is also, oh, this is a Pegasus mini. So um, the all of these yarns that I bought are all different fibers. Um, so the one from Twisted Fiber Arts is 80% um, Merino, 10% uh, Cashmere, 10% Stellina. This one is 45% Alpaca, 45% Merino, 10% Stellina. Um, this one is merino and nylon. The good for you yarns I think are 100% wool. Um, well, at least the the little balls are the colada yarn. Uh, I think. Nope, I'm wrong. They're 45% wool, 40% llama, and 15% Donegal, um, which is this uh, sort of weird like little flex that you see in this yarn. Um, you'll see this with a lot of Irish yarns, um, or at least Irish themed yarns. They'll have all these like little flecks that are just like bits of other fiber mixed in. Um, it looks really cool when it's worked up. It looks really nice as a sweater. Um, so, all right. The last couple of things that I got from YarnCon were, uh, was this basket. This is by It's Maggie Made, which I thought was really cute. Um, obviously, my name is Maggie, and it has these this little wooden emblem here that says It's Maggie Made, um, so I kind of had to have it. These are made, I think these are handmade. Um, they're stitched along here. They're not hand-stitched. They're clearly machine-stitched, but um, out of some sort of fiber and it looks like they just start in the center and work all the way out. Um, but they make a nice yarn basket. Uh, you could buy the handles separate. Um, and these came out of the booth from, I think Firefly Fibers. Um, they also did have lids available. I didn't get a lid for my basket. It just seemed nicer to have it open. It actually made a really nice shopping basket as I was walking around the festival, but it was just something fun and different, uh, different kind of yarn bowl. They do have a feature here where you can run your yarn through and it'll guide it out. Um, one of the annoying things about some yarn bowls is once you start your yarn through, you feed it through a hole that you then can't get it out of. So this one has a snap so that you can get your project out if you wanna switch projects or you wanna take it out of the bowl. 
for whatever reason. So I got this. And then the last thing from YarnCon was this little bee bag. Um, it's a just a project bag, but it was really well made. I make a lot of my own project bags, um, but this one was so well made and I really just love the fabric that I had to get it. Um, so it works like a yarn bowl if you want it to. So you can fold it over. It's got a nice square bottom that it sits on and it'll just sit nice and open for you while you're working on your project. I'm working on an Outlander shawl. I posted a picture of on Facebook and uh, Instagram the other day out of some of my How to Train Your Dragon yarn. So um, sits nice like this. It had a nice strap and a clip. Um, I've been clipping it to the edge of my purse so that I can just carry it with me and it doesn't take up space in my purse. Um, it had a nice waterproof lining. I have spilled Actually, recently I spilled coffee in my, uh, like a, a frappuccino that you get at the, the gas station. I spilled it in my knitting basket and that was kind of a rough day. I had to spend like 25 minutes at work cleaning off everything and trying to dry out my yarn. So having it waterproof just kind of protects it a little bit. Um, and then the last cool feature about these bags is they have snaps on the bottoms so that you can undo this and get a little bit more space in your bag. Um, like I said, it sits nice and flat and works as a yarn bowl if they're snapped down, but opened out, it's more bag shaped and it, you get all the use out of these corners if you need the extra space. So this was just a really cool design on the bag. And again, I really like the B fabric. So I went ahead and bought it and I'm not disappointed. I've been using it for a couple of weeks now and it's holding up fantastic. Um, unfortunately, I do not remember off the top of my head. Oh, you know what? I don't have to remember. They put a, a nice little tag right on the edge here. This is by Chasing Acorns. Uh, a lot of the indie dyers have been using uh, like personalized tags, which you can order from like Etsy and stuff. And it just adds like another level of finish to the project or to the product. So this is a bag by Chasing Acorns. Yeah. Um, if anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to answer those. Um, if you have any questions about YarnCon or anything that I've shown so far, uh, feel free to throw those out in the, uh, the chat. And I am going to kind of look through here. Um, all right. Um, these two yarns here are from the Knitting Pipeline, uh, sort of a retreat. I didn't go to the retreat because it is a knitting retreat uh, specifically, but um, anyway, I usually go to the Little Vendor Festival. It turns out that that, for whatever reason, they do it at a church um, just like, uh, I don't know, three, four miles from my house. So we just run over there. They open the vendor festival or the vendor fair for a couple hours at the end of the retreat. It's open to the public and it's really a few miles from my house. We hop over there and just check things out. This year, um, I really only bought from one vendor there and that was Leading Men Fiber Arts. Um, Leading Men Fiber Arts is a indie dyer um, or pair of indie dyers um, that operate out of Clinton, Illinois, which is not very far from where I live, um, about an hour or so. Um, and they were the first indie dyer that I ever bought yarn from. That was the nicest, like it was the first time I had bought really nice yarn um, from a local yarn store around here. So I like seeing them. Um, and so what I have here is a colorway called Let's Hear It For The Girls. It's a fingering weight and it is 65% merino, 20% silk, and 15% yak. So I have all sorts of fibers going on um, around here right now. Um, it has a ton of halo and I'm pretty sure that's from the yak because um, neither the merino or the silk should be that halo-y. But it's a very fuzzy soft yarn in a really pretty red and purple colorway. 
Um, and then this one really stuck out to me. I'm not sure what I'm going to make with this, but it was a really cool color. Um, it's called L uh, Wilderness. And this one is 150 grams of 100% BFL, which is Blue Faced Lest Lester. Um, and it's not spelled anything like Lester. And I'm not positive I'm pronouncing that correctly. But it is a specific type of sheep. Their wool is not as soft as Merino, but it does look fantastic when it's worked into a shawl. It has beautiful stitch definition and it's really nice for like a fancy accessory. Um, I have a gray shawl made out of the same yarn base that I wear anytime I want like a really nice, like stunning looking piece. Um, the stitches just stand out perfectly. Um, and it's really, it's my favorite shawl. Um, and I made it years ago and I still wear it all the time. So, um, all right, I'm going to check the chat real quick. Um, I don't actually know if the blocking pins are stainless steel. I can look into it. I would hope that somebody who makes something for fiber arts would know that they have to use something that doesn't rust. Um, I have heard of that in the past. Um, a lot of times people will use pins that are intended for sewing where things aren't going to be wet for blocking and they don't um they don't hold up to the water very well and they rust but i would i would hope that they're stainless steel where did i put those um there's not really any good way to look at them and tell um but i mean they're shiny and silver so but i definitely can reach out to the uh the person who made these and and just double check um, and actually I should do that and make sure before I go ahead and use them on something especially something that might show rust um, and somebody mentioning that they've watched the blanket tutorials um, I'm glad to hear that you're enjoying the, the tutorial videos. And if you have any uh, suggestions or requests on types of tutorials you'd like to see, um, I have been going through some stitch dictionaries and trying to come up with some patterns. And I don't know if people want to see hats or scarves or blankets um, or something else, table runner, I don't know. Uh, I've been trying to come up with different things. I feel like I've been doing a bunch of baby blanket tutorials. At least I've been planning a bunch of them. And I don't want to uh, overwhelm you with only baby blanket tutorials. Um, and really what you want to see are cowl patterns. So if, if you guys have something else you want to see, please let me know. Um... All right, so somebody mentioned clothing such as vests and tops. Um, I haven't made much clothing, but I could give it a try and see what I can design. Um, the other thing that I did plan on doing is releasing some stitch tutorials that you might be able to adapt into a piece of clothing that you're happy with. So if I show you how to do a, a new stitch, maybe you can um, translate it into something that you want to wear. Um, Oh, somebody suggested pillows. Uh, pillows is an interesting suggestion. Um, I have considered doing some household items and I've got a whole bunch of yarn here um, that I certainly could use for um, making something for around the house. Um, okay. Oh, and uh, sampler blankets. I see somebody suggested. Uh, Again, not something that I've done before, but I'm willing to learn and uh, actually sampler blankets might be kind of a fun thing because I have a whole bunch of stitch tutorials that I'd like to do. So maybe we can do 24 stitch tutorials and then turn them into a four by six blanket. And with each stitch tutorial, we'll make a, you know, a eight inch by eight inch square or something and we can block it with the blocking pins. So, um, might be a good use of, uh, a whole bunch of different, 
uh, techniques and kind of kill a whole bunch of st birds with one stone. Um, wall art and mosaic interlock crochet. Um, I have thought about doing some tutorials on um, on color work. I'm not sure how exactly that differs from the mosaic or interlock, but um, yeah, we can we can find all of these uh, different ideas. Looks like the the sampler blanket that might actually be a really good thing to get started on. Um, it's it's pretty difficult to get a whole blanket tutorial out as one unit. Um, I've posted a couple times and I don't know if anyone or everyone have se has seen, but I started a new job at the end of January and I had planned on doing a whole bunch of videos. Um, I, I got laid off at the end of last year and then I had all of these grand plans for building up while I was off looking for work and ended up, fortunately, getting a job that I absolutely love, but it has been taking up a ton of my time. Um, so getting a whole big tutorial out is sort of a tall order, but a, a stitch sampler uh, might actually be uh, pretty perfect. Um, all right. So I am, I'll keep watching the comments. Please keep commenting and making suggestions, but I'm going to move on to... Um, I'll probably start with the Red Heart stuff because I can get through it a little bit faster. I've got a whole heap here from Hobby Lobby, which you can probably see next to me. Um, so recently, Moogly blog posted about this uh, It's a Wrap Sprinkles, which looked exactly like the It's a Wrap Rainbow, which I love. It's a stranded cotton yarn. Um, I did a whole tutor or a whole review on this yarn. So if you want to see more about this, um, you should head over to that video and check that out. Um, but while I was on Red Heart's website ordering this, because that was the only place I could get it, I found a couple of other yarns that I want to try out. And I've got those here too. Um, so this is the Red Heart, and this is that popular Icelandic uh, term. It means cozy or living a life with like simple cozy things. Um, it I don't think it translates well out of the the Icelandic. Um, I think it's pronounced Huga, but um, this has been showing up like in every reach of Facebook and Instagram and Pinterest. Um, this this word keeps coming up over and over again. So this is Red Hearts. They have a yarn called Huga, and it's a big fluffy yarn. Actually, I have it right here. Um, I've shown this off in another uh, another stream. It's a it's a really fluffy, bulky yarn. Um, I worked this into a hat, and it actually turned out uh, pretty decent. I thought it was going to be kind of a disaster to work with, but and it ended up being okay. Um, this one is the Huga Charm. Um, it has some sparkle to it. And this is one of those yarns that I was talking about where they've, instead of spinning the fiber in, they've wrapped it. Um, and it looks like they did a pretty decent job of wrapping it. Some of the time you'll find yarn that is wrapped and it's just sort of loosely like wound around the yarn. And when you go to work it, the sparkly part will move around on you and you'll get bunches of sparkle and then sections with no sparkle. Um, so it looks like they did a much nicer job than, uh, than you see a lot of times in the big box stores. But this is a number four yarn. Um, they recommend an eye hook. It's 97% acrylic and 3% other fiber. Other fiber in this case, I'm positive, is the sparkly stuff, um, which is probably like some other kind of plastic or metal uh, or metallic fiber. So I got this in Starry Night and in Shooting Star. Um, both of these uh, are the Huga Charm. They looked pretty. Um, these might actually make for a decent uh, household project. So something like a pillow or something like that. Um, these could work out. There's a huge amount in these. Um, they're 198 gram balls. Um, I don't know why they didn't just go to 200. 
uh, and they have 395 meters or 432 yards. So um, 800 yards of worsted weight yarn would make probably two throw pillows. So um, maybe we can do something with this and um, again with the theme of killing two birds with one stone, maybe I can also do some color work with these and do both at the same time. Uh, last thing I ordered from Red Heart was these little things called Red Heart Croquet. I had no idea they were going to be this little. Um, when I ordered them, they're a number one super fine yarn, which makes them a fingering weight. Um, they recommend a B hook, which is a 2.25 millimeter hook. They're 92% cotton, 5% polyester, 3% other fiber, and again, they're sparkly. Um, but when I ordered them, you can't really tell how big they are. You know, you're just online ordering. Um, and these are 45 grams. And I guess I didn't really know what 45 grams of fingering weight looked like when it was wrapped into a flat little cake. But they're, they're just little, kind of cute little things. They probably would make a nice open scarf. Um, you would probably need two to three of them to make a decent sized shawl. But, um, one of the things that I'm planning on working on some videos on is how to substitute yarn. And if you have a pattern that calls for a fingering weight yarn, something like one of these indie dyed yarns that I was just showing, um, the designer designed it to go with a sock weight yarn and you just don't want to spend the $27 or so um, that some of the indie dyed yarns cost, these would be a great alternative. They're a fingering weight yarn, they're sparkly, they kind of have a gradient look to them. Um, they would be good substitutes. I haven't worked with these, so I can't say how they work up, but this style of yarn would definitely be a good substitute for that, uh, that type of project. Same with these guys over here. All right. Um, somebody's asking about using charts, the graph crochet using the computer generated image as a pattern. Um, those are, those are called charts. And yes, I do work off of charts sometimes. Um, like I mentioned, the, the books that I've been using recently are all out of Japan. Um, and so, or the, the stitch books are all from Japan. And, um, so I have been using charts to, to do those. Oh, um, yeah, maybe I, maybe I misunderstood. My husband suggested that maybe you were talking about like graph GANs, which are where you use either a, cr a corner to corner pattern or a uh, single crochet to make an image and you switch colors out um, to do, to make a pattern that'll make like a, like a pixelated image. Um, those I have not tried doing, but I'm confident I could figure it out and we could, um, you know, do a small tutorial on how to do maybe a, uh, like a wash rag. And then that that concept would translate to any large project. Oh, okay. So that's, that's what, um, sorry, just scrolling back a little bit. You guys are chatting a lot tonight, which is great. Um, oh, I see. Yeah, there was the, um, the graph crochet from a picture. Um, yeah, I see a whole bunch of really good suggestions in here. Um, somebody mentioned doing a few rows a week as a blanket with different stitches per row, um, sort of like as a crochet along. That might be really fun to do um, as something where we could all work together on, maybe if we do the stitch sampler, we'll do it as a crochet along. Everyone can work up the, the square and we can post pictures on Facebook and sort of chat about them and um, kind of have a discussion, help each other along um, type of thing. I've been wanting to get 
a little bit more community on Facebook. I might have the group set up wrong. Um, so I might have to consult with some people that I know that run uh, more of a forum type of crochet group rather than like a business page. Um, I may have to convert that so that we can chat and have discussion, but I think that could be a lot of fun to uh, sort of work together. Um, somebody, oh, somebody's asking for a chunky knit blanket. Um, if you're talking about the really, really heavy, uh, chunky yarn, um, generally I think those are just single crochet or just all knits and they just go straight across because really you're not looking for anything, uh, fancy there. It's really about showing off the gigantic yarn and just seeing gigantic stitches. Um, I did work up a little section of blanket out of the uh, Bernat blanket. Uh, Bernat blanket mega huge? I don't Big, I think it was called. Bernat blanket big. Um, so... I did work up a gigantic chunky blanket. No, I was actually looking for the purple one. I think it's in that box, but it's okay. Um, I can get it out in a second. You can just set that down, I can put it away. All right, um, so that's all from Red Heart. I didn't order a ton of different stuff, but I ordered a bunch of this Sparkles yarn, and I'm or uh, Sprinkles yarn, and I'm pretty excited about that. <laughs> Somebody's mentioning knot squares, they never get sewn together. Uh, how many yards are in the croquet yarn? The croquet yarn is 239 yards or 219 meters. They're 1.5 ounce or 45 gram uh, cakes, I guess. I'm a little bit concerned about how well this ball will hold together. Um, it sort of feels like it'll stay together, but it kind of feels like you could just like really ruin this um package and it would like it would just kind of pop out so um i've noticed that a handful of companies have started selling yarn flat like this um the red heart amigurami is sold flat like this and you can just like pop the center out and yarn bee from hobby lobby has a whole bunch of like really flat cakes like this they just don't seem very stable to me. And maybe I'm wrong. It's just my opinion based on eye, not in any experience. Um, they just don't look very uh, stable. And maybe that's just because I drag all of my stuff everywhere with me. And um, even a really good fat tall cake will fall apart. By the way, the colorways on these are Revenge and Titanium. Um, Revenge is purple to olive to sort of a tan or some gray. It was just kind of a cool um, sort of earth tones colorway. And then titanium is all different grays, um, sort of grays and taupes. So uh, somebody mentioned that they would start from the outside. I would start from the outside on these as well and work to the center. I wouldn't want to work from the inside on these. I think they would collapse not too far in. Um, all right. Um, I know I still have this pile of Hobby Lobby, but I'm gonna go through these boxes real quick. So again, these are the subscription service from Litherco. Um, I'm not positive I'm saying that last name right, but uh, that's my best attempt there. Um, this is a crochet subscription, which I thought was really nice. There's a uh, knit crate is available for knitters and there's probably other ones, but I found this one. It's a crochet subscription. It comes, if you get their deluxe subscription, you get a skein of yarn and a hook and some sort of extra and a pattern. So um, the pattern on this one was for a springtime cowl and it came with a yarn to do that. I think this is a DK weight. It is called Springtime. It's 100% merino, 
merino. It's 100 grams or 231 yards. And it's got all sorts of pretty springy colors in here. Um, and I really like that she does the picture here in the same colorway, and so you actually know what it's going to look like. Um, and then the hook comes in a nice little box for storing in it, and like a little jewelry box. Um, and it is a hand-turned hook. Um, I really appreciate that they are, you probably can't see this, but they're stamped on the bottom with the size. Um, when I bought, I bought a Furl's Odyssey hook out of their first batch, and they did not mark them in any way. So I bought two of them, and they're pretty close in size. I think they're a five and a half and a six and a half. And you can tell which is bigger, but if you don't have them to compare, you don't know which size you have. So really the only way to, to guess is to have the two of them and then know which ones you bought. Um, and that was a whole big thing, and I think they've fixed that since then with the Odyssey hooks, but um, it was a, a big problem that they were going through, and they, like, offered to buy a whole bunch of them back and stuff. Um, and then the little extra surprise here is a pair of scissors, and these have, like, a little panda bear. Um, they're just little, uh, little snips for cutting your yarn. So they're just a cute little extra in the box. Uh, I think the subscription service is $40 shipped. Um, and that seems like a pretty good deal to me for a pattern, a hand-turned hook. I think uh, when I spoke with the owner um, of the company on Facebook, she said her husband hand turns all of the hooks and she dyes all of the yarn herself. And so the subscription service goes... Uh, so you get the hand-dyed yarn, the hand-turn hook, the pattern that she works up, and a uh, something little extra surprise. And the whole box comes as a surprise, so you don't know what you're getting. You don't get to pick colors or anything like that. You can pick if you want a colored hook or a wooden hook. That's about all of Oh. Um, yeah, as always, I'm not sponsored by anybody, um, not by the subscription service, not by any yarn company. Everything that you see here, I buy myself and pay for myself. And uh, and yeah, all of the opinions are, are mine. So I just think this is a cool thing. Um, and I really like crochet specific things because it feels like everything is, um, is targeted at knitters. In, in, for the most part. Um, how much was the croquet? Um, I don't actually remember, but I can get that price for you in just a second. Uh, give me one second. Sure. All right. Um, yeah, and I guess that's not to say, so somebody said unbiased reviews are the best, and I feel like I agree, but it's not to say, I, I would hope that if I was sponsored by somebody, I would still give you my accurate opinion, but I don't know, maybe I would feel, uh, swayed to spin everything positively, um, not to offend somebody. So, um, this is the one that came just the other day. Uh, so this is called Starry Night. It's a DK weight. Again, 100% merino, 231 yards, 100 gram, uh, skein of yarn in like re really pretty, uh, yellow and blue colorway. Um, the pattern that came with it is for a scarf. So one skein will make the whole scarf. It looks like a narrow, very open scarf um, with chevrons. Um, but the chevrons kind of get hidden in the variegated colorway here. Um, and then I also got a hook to work this up. It's a really pretty, um, very 
a wood with a lot of character. It's got a lot of darks and lights in it. Um, and it is a size seven hook, which is a four and a half. A seven millimeter hook doesn't have a, a letter, weirdly. Um, I don't really understand why. Um, so my husband's saying that the croquet yarn, um, somebody asked is $4.99. Um, that is of course, without any sales. Um, I feel like maybe you can get croquet from Joanne fabric. Um, I could only get the, it's a wrap sprinkles, which is what I was looking for from Red Heart's website, which incidentally was not cooperating. I don't know if that's a regular thing, but it dumped my cart like six times while I was trying to check out with that yarn. Um, if I didn't want it so badly, I probably would have given up and bought other yarn um, from somewhere else. So, um, oh, somebody mentioned that the, the yarn is Harry Potter-like. Oh, the hooks look like Harry Potter. Yeah. Um, they're, they're kind of reminiscent of the wands. Um, some different Harry Potter characters. They're really pretty. Um, they sit really nice in your hand too. Um, when I crochet, I tend to get a cramp back here on my pinky because I hold my hook really hard down here. Um, and so a nice wide hook at the end is really nice for me. Um, so I actually have not had much of a chance to work with any of the subscription boxes. Um, but Normally I would stop the subscription, but I kind of really like getting them. I used to get Birchbox, which delivers uh, like beauty stuff. And now I get a yarn one because I like that better. <laughs> um, the secret surprise or the special surprise with this month's was a uh, lotion bar that they, uh, I'm pretty sure is handmade. It's, let's see what's in here. Um, beeswax, shea butter, coconut oil, and lemongrass. And it just has kind of a nice smell. These lotion bars, I've had these before, um, are really nice for crocheters and knitters because you can rub them on your hands and like smooth down all of the rough skin without making your hands real greasy, like they would get if you put lotion on them and tried to work with yarn. So you can just kind of like, you just rub them on like you're rubbing like dry soap and then just smooth them in, but your hands don't end up like super greasy or uh, slippery, so you can still crochet. Um, I hate in the winter when my hands get, uh, my hands get pretty rough in the winter and get pretty dry and then my yarn catches and it drives me kind of crazy. So that was a nice little bonus there. All right, so I'm gonna put these guys away and now I'm gonna get into this giant pile from Hobby Lobby. Um, so I don't tend to shop at Hobby Lobby all that often. Um, Hobby Lo Lobby is just not on my way for whatever reason. It's not really very far from the other craft stores that I go to, Joanne or Michael's, but it just seems very out of the way where I live. Um, and I do a lot of we weekend shopping and they're obviously not open on Sunday. So, um, kind of takes out a lot of my shopping time. But recently I've been to Hobby Lobby and they are clearancing out a whole bunch of stuff. I'm a little bit sad because I've been, I had been waiting for these hooks to go on sale. These look like the, the Furls candy shop hooks. They're um, from Hobby Lobby. Yarnology is the, the brand on there, but it's a house brand. Um, but they're these kind of bubbly looking hooks and I've been waiting for them to go on sale. And I was at Hobby Lobby yesterday and they have clear installed them out and they're not available at my local store. Um, I went to the store in the town over and my mom stopped at a Hobby Lobby for me and they're completely sold out of them. Um, I a little bit curious as to whether they're maybe having some copyright infringement problems with furls because they really, really look like they're candy shop hooks. Um, but anyway, if you have a Hobby Lobby around you and they have these on clearance, I would grab some. They're pretty cool. Um, even if you don't want to use them, they're kind of pretty just to have as a decoration. 
Um, I have a number of crochet hooks that I keep around just because they're pretty to look at, not because they're terribly functional. Um, these again, though, do have the nice fat ends on them. And again, um, here I can try and get this out. They're kind of packaged really tight. Let's see if I can get this out of here. Oh, uh, let's see. Oh, I closed it. Um, somebody mentioned in the subscription box. Yeah, I just stumbled across it on Facebook, uh, again, about the Lytherco subscription box and just signed up and decided to see what I got. And I've been very happy with what I've been getting. Um, seems like nice yarn. The lady who runs the company seems very nice. Um, somebody asked about a giant crochet blanket they're trying to make, um, went to Michael's and bought the biggest yarn they had was Brunette blanket and it was so weak. Um, for a giant crochet blanket, I guess I would go with probably regular Bernat blanket. Um, it's weak because all it's made of is two tiny little threads wrapped around a bunch of like fuzzies. Um, but, but yeah, so I guess. I'm not sure if they mean weak as in breaking or weak as in like way. Oh, um. Oh, my, my husband's suggesting that maybe by weak you mean uh, lame, in which case um, I I would maybe, if you're in the United States and you have Hobby Lobby available to you, they had a ton of gigantic yarns. Um, I didn't buy them because I wasn't in the market for really, really giant yarns. Um, you can also, if you're willing to wait like forever... Um, I have seen the gigantic, like crazy fat, uh, roving style, which where is where it doesn't even look twisted. I've seen that come up on Wish, which is just a random website that imports stuff from China. It usually takes forever to get stuff from Wish, like eight to 12 weeks. So if you want to make a blanket this winter you could order it now and uh make it by fall but otherwise hobby lobby had a ton of stuff um michaels and joanne fabric have sort of a seasonal rotation of yarns um, i've noticed this especially with uh michaels they'll get in a ton of yarn around september and by january their yarn section looks depleted and they have nothing available so unfortunately, if you want gigantic yarn, you really have to wait until fall slash winter when they're really stocked up on fat yarns. So, um, and then Leanne mentioned that the hooks break very easily if dropped. I think they're acrylic, so that makes sense. Um, they're probably not particularly strong too, if you're working on something with a lot of tension, but like I said, they were really pretty and I was hoping to grab them on sale and, uh, unfortunately they clearance them all out. Um, the good news is, is with all of the clearance, I got a ton of pins. I love having pins for using as shawl pins. Um, so sometimes they sell them as brooches in the jewelry department and sometimes they're in the yarn department. Um, but I wear all sorts of shawls and I like to have these around. Um, a lot of times I'll loan them or give them to my mom too. Um, so I got a couple of butterflies here, one silver and one multicolor, um, a really big flower with a blue stone in the center. And all of these were under $2, $1.50, two bucks, marked down from eight and six. So they were a really good deal. Uh, this one's actually intended to be worn as a shawl pin. You pull this pin out. Well, if you can fight it out of the packaging. And there's a hole in the side here um, that you can run the, the long pin through and you gather some of your shawl material and just stab the pin through and kind of pick it up. 
Um, it's, it's lighter than it looks, but it's still pretty heavy. It would wear pretty heavy on a shawl. Um, it would probably have to be a relatively dense shawl. It would probably collapse a um, real open shawl. I'm going to try and stab that back in there. Uh, this was just a rose of sort of the same style. It's intended to be worn as a shawl pin. Um, it's got this. You can actually just use these pins. Um, you don't have to use the brooch portion. Um, you just take these and wiggle them through and they'll usually hold pretty well. Um, these here, I bought, they're little claps, they're little clasps out of the jewelry department um, for making bracelets. I also bought some leather cord uh, that I'm going to try crocheting with. I've never crocheted with leather cord. I don't think I've, I've seen anyone try and crochet with it. Um, so I thought it might be fun to try some crochet jewelry. Um, and I bought these little clasps to work with them. And these were less than a dollar. Um, so wander around Hobby Lobby and find all sorts of fun deals. Um, this was a really weird little thing. It's got a top on it so that it's, it's like a little vase. Um, so I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with that, but maybe I can crochet a flower and put it in there and wear it as a pin. Um, it was just something kind of weird. I bought this butterfly pin too. So all sorts of decorations to put on shawls. Um, more of the same, just another pin. This one's a triangle. Um, somebody mentioned Harry Potter. This one kind of reminded me of the uh, uh, Deathly Hallows. Obviously it doesn't have the circle through the center, but that's what it reminded me of here. Um, all right, so... I was able also on clearance to pick up some crochet thread. Um, this is a color, what is this called? Ocean Sunset that I've been working on a uh, sort of a doily or table runner. Actually, it's sitting over here. Um, it's a pattern called Fractal. And it starts out as a circular doily. And then you work these rows back and forth um slide it back here so you can see the details and it's got these points on the corners so um kind of kind of a cool like shell shape um i need to do this whole side over here so it mirrors the other direction um and swirls this way and it's a really cool looking pattern when it's done um, it took way more thread than i expected and i sort of put it in timeout, as people say, um, because it was, it's tough work working with crochet thread when you switch from regular yarn to thread. Uh, thread has almost no give. It has just no elongation and doesn't stretch at, at all. Um, and, and that's really more of a characteristic of cotton than it is of, of the size of the yarn. But, um, yeah, I just had to put it aside for a little bit. It was starting to hurt my hands. So. Um, but I was able to pick up another ball of that. Um, so because I got... Uh, I wasn't able to get these bubbly crochet hooks that I had been waiting uh, to go on sale. Um, I didn't want them to clearance out this other line of crochet hooks. These I... So I went ahead and got these. These were not on sale. Um, they were just regular price. They're not that expensive. They're a couple of dollars. Um, between three and the most expensive one is $4. Um, these are not laid out in order. But they have... I'm just going to pull the packaging apart here. They're really hard to unbox. I guess they don't want you stealing them from the store. Um, they're plastic. They're a solid, each one's a different solid color, and then they have this really pretty floral detail on the edge here, um, and that's on both sides. They're also kind of a weird shape. Um, I don't know if you can see, but they're, they're pretty flat, almost like a toothbrush. Um, they get fat over here, and they're really flat this direction, um, but they hold really nice in a knife grip. So when I hold my hook like this, this is a knife grip. 
Some people crochet like this, which is a pencil grip. Um, and then some people have sort of an over, like, an overhand way of holding things, which they call a claw sometimes. Um, it's sort of a hybrid of the two. But I hold my hooks like this, and again, I get sort of a cramping down here on my pinky. So anything that's fatter on this end is nice. Um, these are really nice long hooks, too. Um, but... I've worked with the eye hook, which is the five and a half millimeter, and I actually was pleasantly surprised. I'm usually very, very picky with my crochet hooks. Um, I pretty much only use Clover Amour hooks, uh, and those are my favorite. And no matter how many times I try and switch to a different hook or I want to try something new, I always go back to the Clover Amours. Um, I have two full sets of them and probably half a dozen three and a half millimeter hooks because that's what I use all the time. Um, and really, I just keep going back to those. So um, when I find a hook that I'm even willing to work with um, outside of those, that's something pretty major for me. Um, and honestly, these were pretty decent hooks. Um, they didn't catch the yarn at all. I've had trouble with plastic hooks in the past where they, they seem to grab onto the yarn. Um, and it doesn't slide very nicely, and I did not have the, that problem with these. So if you want something kind of fancy, but don't want to spend a ton, uh, these, like I said, are between 2 and $4 a piece. And Hobby Lobby always has a 40% off coupon. If, uh, if you're buying an item that's not on sale, you can use a coupon. So if you want to get these one at a time over time, you can get 40% off of all of them. All right, on to the Hobby Lobby yarn. So I don't think you've been able to see the whole pile here the whole time, but I'll pull it over. I don't want to pull it too far over. Um, so one of the things that I've noticed, at, and I mentioned this a little bit ago, is that once it's past about January, you really can't get much of interest from Michaels or Joanne Fabric, um, at least not the ones around my area. Um, they stock up like crazy in the winter months and then come January, it's just all gone. Um, so one of the things that I've noticed is Hobby Lobby doesn't seem to have that issue. They constantly have new, interesting, kind of weird stuff that nobody else is doing. And so I wandered around for a while uh, a couple weeks ago and picked out some really just bizarre and interesting yarns um, that I thought I would try working with. Um, so most of these are Yarn B, uh, Yarn B brand um, or Baby B brand. They are Hobby Lobby's house brand and so they're only available there or on the internet if somebody's reselling them. Um, and I think you can actually order from Hobby Lobby online now, and you can order from them on Sunday. So if you have to order something on a Sunday, um, there's, a, there's a handful of camera stores on the, the East Coast that uh, are, uh, the owners are Jewish and they don't even allow you to order on Saturday, which is why I mentioned that you can order on Sunday. Um, so even though their stores are not open, their website is. So this is Baby Bee Adorable, Adora Ball. Um, it's a super bulky yarn. Um, I really, really liked the like watercolor look to these. Um, I bought a whole bunch of them because the yardage is pretty low. They're 100 grams or 38 yards. Um, these run $4.49 a piece. I bought everything here on sale um, when they had uh, all of their yarn on sale a day. But they recommend a 15 millimeter hook, which I think is the biggest hook that I bought out of this size. Yeah, so this one here is a 15 millimeter. It's a pretty substantial hook. Um, but I'm pretty excited to work something up with this. I just want to make a big fluffy baby blanket out of this, I think. Um, I have five of these, which still is only going to get me 
uh, 200 yards or so, if I do my math in my head correctly. So yeah, got a whole bunch of these. Um, let me see if there's a colorway. The colorway is called Maiden Fair. Um, and they're all this sort of rainbow pastel color. They had a bunch of cool colors in this f fluffy yarn. Um, it has a different feel to it than Burnett Blanket. It's, it's more Muppety. I don't really know how to, <laughs> I don't know. I don't, there's not a real good description for that, but it's, it's fluffy and you want to pet it. Um, Burnett Blanket is is fuzzy but not you don't want to keep petting it it's it's got that microfiber feel that grabs at the dry skin on your hands i always feel like and it it, it almost feels sticky um you like your your hands stick to it so this does not feel this way it's it's very it's like a stuffed animal um do they slide without squeaking um, yeah, the, the hooks do not squeak. So at least these ones, I haven't tried this one out. I sort of think that it will squeak. Um, these, these bubbly ones, they feel very plasticky. Um, and actually just rubbing my thumb on it, I can tell you that they're going to squeak these, these ones, but you can't get these ones. So, um, that's probably not a problem. These crochet hooks, um, the ones with the flowers on the sides do not squeak. I've used them a whole bunch with a whole bunch of different yarns, including acrylic. Um, a lot of times I find that the squeaking happens when you get plastic on plastic rubbing. And I have not had any problems with them squeaking. They're kind of a dull plastic. I don't actually... It doesn't say what they're made of, but um, I would guess not acrylic. They're probably like a PETG or something like that, like a... A different type of plastic but it's not squeaky um i'm gonna kind of scroll back and see if there's anything i missed um somebody mentioned the thick yarn on clearance yeah um my michaels moves the clearance yarn sometimes all the way to the front corner of the store like totally the opposite side and opposite corner of um, where they keep the yarn. So you might have to just wander around a little bit to find the clearance yarn. Um, sometimes there's a small section in the yarn section and then they have a huge section up in a clearance department. So I'm going to move all these guys off to the side. All right, what else do we have? Um, I have a bunch of these cotton XXL. So these are 100% cotton. Um, they appear to be sort of a, a thick and thin yarn, um, so you can see it's pretty fat here um, and a bit skinnier here. These can be a little bit tricky to work with because you're not really sure what size hook to use. Um, on the skinny parts, if you use a big hook, then they're more open, and on the fat parts, if you use a small hook, they're too tight. So... Um, they recommend a nine millimeter hook and that probably will work just fine. Um, but it might be a little bit more open on these skinny parts. This is a really, really fluffy cotton. Um, so a lot of times when you buy cotton for crochet, um, you're either looking at something like thread, which is really, really shiny, but, but really hard. Um, and it, like by heart, I mean, doesn't stretch or give at all kind of fights with you and digs into your hands a little bit. Um, or then you have something like dishcloth cotton, which I, I always feel like dishcloth cotton looks like it's for a dishcloth. It's kind of a, they're, they're never super bright, fun colors. They're usually sort of blah. And they just, they're perfect for dishcloths, but they're not, you wouldn't want to use them for a sweater or something like that, typically. Um, I know people do, and they're happy with them, and that's, I, that's just my opinion. I, I wouldn't want to use it, because the, the colors are just never what you want them to be. Um, so I was kind of excited by this, uh, this cotton yarn. Um, you don't often see... 100% natural fibers in the big box stores. Sometimes you do, but um, it's it's 
more often than not, usually acrylic and polyester yarns that you see at Michael's and Joanne um, and Hobby Lobby. So this is 100% cotton. It's a 100 gram ball. There's 50 yards or 46 meters, making it a bulky number five yarn. Um, this one is called Cotton XXL. I think I said that. Um, this is almond, shale, and clay. And I thought these really were like a pretty set together. Um, kind of nice colors to coordinate with each other. And so I don't know what I want to make out of these. Um, they might make a nice like hand towel. So similar to a dishcloth, but something that you'd want to sort of hang up and um, maybe something out of like chevrons or something would be fun out of these. Um, there's... <laughs> Um, no matter the color, you can't make a fun dishcloth. Well, um, I've been working with the, the Red Heart Scrubby yarns, and I've been, I've got a little one that I've been working on here. Um, so this is the Scrubby Sparkle yarn. Um, uh, it is the weirdest feeling yarn. It's sort of like a sparkly Brillo pad. Um, and I made these little round dishcloths. I have all of the scrubby line. I have all four different yarns and I've been working on getting a review together to just kind of compare them. Um, but I did buy them in black, white, and yellow. And I was thinking of making some sort of bee dishcloth that might be a little bit more fun. Um, but yeah, I mean, dishcloths are for dishes and you can only have so much fun doing the dishes um or scrubbing the counters so um but yeah i don't know i i i just i guess i feel like cotton could be so i, I guess i should elaborate the the job that i took in january i work with cotton all day um yarn for the uh f the textiles industry so for making clothing not for knitting and crocheting with um, and I primarily work with cotton all day. And so I spend a lot of my day thinking about cotton. Um, and, and I guess part of me just wants to see better cotton available to knitters and crocheters. Um, so, uh, t in that regard, I guess I really like seeing something different from a big box store that's 100% cotton. Um, there are a lot of people who can't work with wool. I love working with wool, um, but there are a lot of people with allergies that just are not able to work with wool or alpaca or yak. And so when I see nice things happening with cotton, that makes me happy. Um, so this is a nice fluffy yarn. This came in a bunch of colors. They're still muted, but they're at least a little bit more um, modern palette, I guess. Set these guys aside. Oh, what else do I have? Um, this is a kind of a interesting yarn that Hobby Lobby, this is again yarn B. Um, this is a, this is called Color Play. Um, it, so the line is called Color Play. The color way is called Weekender. Um, and it's very nautical feeling. Um, all of the colors came in very nautical themes. They're, they had red and white. They had a really, really pretty blue and white. Um, some ocean colors. So it was the white with like a teal and a blue and a green and um, all different blues. I went with these. They kind of reminded me of ribbon candy. Um, they came in, um, sort of a rainbow here. Um, there's some yellow, orange, blue, green. I don't see any purple, but doesn't mean it's not in there. Oh, that could be sort of purple there. Um, but yeah, these are fun. They're very, very fluffy, fuzzy, um, yarns with a ton of halo. So they're going to be 
a little bit challenging to work with. They're probably going to shed all over. Um, I'll probably choose to wear them on a day that I'm wearing black jeans and a black sweater or something like that because that seems to be how it goes. But these could make a fun, um, just a fun scarf, I think, would be something would look really nice and fuzzy. Um, I think they'd be fun for like Christmas time. Um, again, I think because I think they remind me of of ribbon candy. And when I think of ribbon candy, I sort of think of Christmas. So um, maybe I'll get something together later this year with these and uh, make something around Christmas time. Um, all right. So the next yarn that I have is called Comfy Classic. And I have it in charcoal, purple, and ocean water. Um, so they're these three colors, I thought they looked nice together. Um, I don't know what I want to make of these yet. Um, they might make a nice, like, hat and, uh, fingerless glove set with some color work. Um, or something separately, individually. Um, they were just fun. I can't really describe to you how squishy these are. Like, hopefully you're seeing this on the video a bit, um, but they, it's just like, I don't know, it's just the springiest yarn. Um, it's made of 48% viscose, 30% uh, polyester, and 22% nylon. Um, they're sort of loosely spun together. Um, so there's a whole bunch of fibers here. There's probably like 15 plies here. Um, and like I said, they're just like the squishiest yarn. Uh, what were the other ones made of? So this one is a hundred percent acrylic. Um, it is hundred grams and 60 yards and they recommend a nine millimeter crochet hook. Um, and then this one again was hundred percent cotton and they recommended a nine millimeter crochet hook as well. Uh, 100 grams, 50 yards. So these, again, are yarn B, not baby B. Um, they are uh, 100 grams, 150 yards. That makes them a number four worsted. I think both of these were sixes. Number six, they're calling this one number five. Pretty sure they were the same yardage. Uh, no, this one was a little little more. So realistically, this should be a number six, I think, but Hobby Lobby says it's number five. Um, so while I was looking for those bubbly crochet hooks uh, yesterday and today at my local stores, um, I came across this yarn, which is yarn B must be Merino. Uh, let me move some of these guys out of the way. I don't want to mix that one in. Um, get some clutter out of the way. Um, must be Merino in white and in bright blue. Um, they had these in a number of, uh, very adult colors, which is pretty rare. These are a DK weight, a number three weight. Um, and you don't often see DK weight in the United States is pretty much reserved for baby yarn. Um, there are a couple lines. Michaels has a DK weight, Joy DK, which I think I did a review on recently, um, that is one of the only DK weights I can think of that's available at big box stores. Um, sometimes a, a pattern designer will call for a DK weight out of a indie, uh, indie dyer's yarn and if you don't have DK weight, it can be kind of hard to get in the US. So I was kind of excited to see these. They also are interesting because they're 50% merino wool. Um, and merino wool is near impossible to get in the US in big box stores. Um, and by that, I mean any of the big craft stores. Um, Michael's, Joanne, Hobby Lobby, Walmart, uh, AC Moore on the East Coast. None of them carry merino um, as a general rule. They often have wool, 
of some nondescript origin, but very, very rarely do you see merino. So these are 50% merino, 25% acrylic, and 25% nylon. They have a really nice squish to them. Um, they're 100 grams and 227 yards, which is 208 meters. And they are calling for a G hook, which is a four millimeter hook. Um, but they're a really nice feeling yarn. Um, for those of you who have just broken into crocheting um, or just into the fiber arts world and you've felt itchy wool sweaters um, at, you know, Everyone's got a, a grandma or an aunt or somebody who's given you an itchy wool sweater um, that you hated. Um, for those of you who have not felt good quality merino wool, I strongly recommend you find some and just pet it um, or squish it or whatever. Um, buy it if you're able to, but... Uh, Really nice quality wool feels nothing like the scratchy, terrible wool um, that comes to mind when most people think of wool. All right, finally, very last thing. Um, this was just a really, really stunning dark blue and black yarn. Um, it's got the kind of sparkle that I don't like as much, which is the kind where it's wrapped around the yarn. Um, and this is sort of what I was talking about. You can slide this around a little bit. Uh, this one's not too bad. It's, it's embedded pretty good. Um, versus some of the more expensive yarns where it's like mixed in here. Um, I don't know if you can really see the sparkle on this at all if that's coming through on the camera, but the sparkle on this is, is actually part of the fiber. It's, it's spun in where this is wrapped around, but this was just such a pretty yarn to look at. Um, they actually suggest making a, like a shopping bag or a purse out of it. And I might do just that. Um, it's, it's really a cool looking yarn. Um, I didn't get enough of it probably to make a big shawl, but I think there's enough here to make a bag. Um, I may have to go back and get another ball even to make a, a, a bag. But this is 98% acrylic, 2% metallic polyester, um, which is the sparkly stuff. It's 100 grams, 249 yards. Um, and they recommend an eye hook, which is a five and a half millimeter hook. All right. I'm going to look real quick and see if there's any comments. Um, somebody said, are they hundred percent acrylic? I'm not sure which one. Oh, the ribbon candy one. Yeah. We answered that. Um, the weight on this yarn is a number four worsted weight. Um, so these were four, these were threes, which were DK. Um, six, and they're calling that a five, but I would say probably also a six. Uh, might be a five just because there's thicks and thins, but, um, uh, I think that's everything that I've got to show you. I know that's a ton of stuff. If there is something that you want to see first, if you want to see something in more in detail, um, please leave me comments. I try and read and respond to nearly every comment that comes across um, through Facebook, through Instagram, through Face... I said Facebook, YouTube. <laughs> um, so I try and respond to everything. If I miss you, I am so sorry. Just message me again or try and get my attention on another. Um, and I I apologize if things are coming through uh, slowly, um, but I am still getting content up and trying to stream um, here and there. Um, I'm not thinking of any shows or big things that I've got going that I'll be live streaming from. Um, unfortunately, the live stream at YarnCon didn't come out great. Uh, they didn't have very good service and they had no Wi-Fi. And so it was 
pretty jumbled up, but hopefully you guys read the description and were able to see the pictures as I was posting them on Instagram and Facebook at the same time. Um, but yeah, oh, and you guys can probably see this off on the side. Um, this I also got at Hobby Lobby just because I thought it was cool. Um, it's just a mermaid. Um, it's been holding up my yarn back here, but there was kind of just like a person off to the side there. So just as an explanation for what that is. Um, I'll wait just another second in case there's any more comments or questions before I get going. Um, somebody mentioned doing the crochet along. I would like to get that started. So if you guys are interested, um, I know somebody mentioned that squares don't get sewn together, but maybe we can learn to do the uh, join as you go squares. So that's a thing that some people do. Um, you start one square and then as you finish the knit, as you work the next one, you work into some of the loops on the last square. Um, that way you don't have to join at the end. Um, then your blanket builds as you're going and there's no sewing anything together at the end. So maybe we'll try that technique and do a crochet along together on, uh, we'll do videos here on face or on YouTube, but then work together as a community and help each other out on Facebook. Um, oh yeah, somebody had also mentioned doing, uh, various stitches just as you're working through a project. Um, I think somebody mentioned a blanket, but, uh, maybe doing them as a scarf would be a little bit easier to work through. Um, just do a few rows of a different stitch pattern. Um, yeah, uh, somebody mentioned the scrap blanket. That's a, doing... Doing a few rows of a particular stitch um, is a really great way to use up loose ends of yarn that you've got around um, from various projects. So, um, all right. If there's no more comments or questions, um, I am gonna sign or you know log off of here. Um, this was a long stream, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Um, and again, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, at Experiments in Crafting. And as always, you can leave comments down below. Uh, have a great evening.